A wave of uh, anti-war protests sweeping across college campuses. Joining us now is former SEC Chairman uh, Jay Clayton. He's a CNBC contributor and spent more than a decade teaching uh, at Penn at the University of Pennsylvania. And I know my, my friend, colleague, who I actually do, do love and cherish, uh, not just your family. You, you had a lot of stuff to say about this uh, recently and what, what might be done. Some pretty draconian ideas yep. about... You know, I got get a lot them, of love and a lot of hate over the weekend about them, it. Take the masks off and know that you're never going to be hired anywhere ever again if you continue this. But what, 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 and you can get into that yep. with him. Mm -hmm. But my question, is, just watching it happen, I've been around a while. I mean, I've been around in the, in the 60s and 70s. So I, I know college kids and I know protesting and I know how that works. And I remember Occupy Wall Street. I look at it now. And I'm just wondering how many of those people just are in love with the idea of going out and expressing themselves, and how many of them are really, really hate Jewish people and are anti-Semitic? What, what, is, what is really behind all this at this point? Well, I, th I think you, you raise something that pe people aren't talking about. Kids, kids on college campuses, adults on college campuses, they, they do feel that the protesters of the 60s and 70s, I mean, I've been on campus a long time, were heroes. They were people who sort of changed our society through the Voting Rights Act, through civil rights and the like, and they were they're people to be revered. And so you would like to style yourself as somebody who's going to change society for the good. Sure, that is a sentiment that's up in on college campuses, and it's, it's a healthy sentiment. Do we have a healthy sentiment right now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. When, when I was here in, um, after the hearings, uh, I think it was in December, we talked about it and said, look, if, if the only thing that happens here is Liz McGill and Claudine Gay get fired and what's going on in college campuses continues, it's a total waste. And what has happened since then? Actually, not a lot. What do we know? Anti-Semitism has deep roots on college campuses. We now know that starkly. We got to do something about it. And that's, that from, is, that's that 10, is 15 years of hiring professors, uh, administrators that how do they all find each other? The, well, it, the, op the oppressor-oppressed culture okay. yeah. is self-perpetuating. That's another thing that we've learned about college campuses. If you look at tenure decisions... And Israel just at, represents, in, in a nutshell, a, an oppressor nation almost... almost it, as, I, I saw it said, Israel and Ferguson are the same thing. And I, I, that, I had to, like, think about that for well, a you, while. Well, you, you, have, you have... Look, we have... Anti-Semitism is age-old. And then you have that coupled with Israel and coupled with this oppressor-oppressed culture. It's a, it's a cauldron for hate. And college leadership needs to just say, we have a big problem, and we need to address it. Some of do, you, those, do you hear that? Do you hear any the president? The Columbia University president, back after 9-11, said that protests, uh, that terrorism and protests are, are part of the same thing. So we already knew about her long before yeah. she was hired. So why hire her? Why? Well, like I said, it's been self-perpetuating. Let me ask you just about the role of business in all of this. So I wrote a column over the weekend. We talked about it on the air, I think, even before uh, the column itself, about the role that business could play in all of this, both in the context of thinking about universities, um, frankly, as vendors in terms of employment. How, how, you know, every university is hiring these students uh, or not. And not just about saying, OK, we're not going to hire uh, you know, those who are uh, blatantly anti-Semitic, mm -hmm. but whether you might say to yourself, okay, you know what, we would never hire an executive search firm mm -hmm. that had even one employee who was anti-Semitic. The second there was, it was, it was somebody who was anti-Semitic or uh, somebody who was against um, uh, LGBT people publicly, mm -hmm. you would say, you know what, you guys are on ice completely until you fix the whole situation. And yes, it would hurt uh, innocence, if you mm -hmm. will, but it would probably create real pressure on the head of that executive search firm or the head of the university, the administration sure. of the university, because the other students, who, by the way, have been sitting on the sideline not saying much either, would start calling up the administration saying, you know what, we're all getting, we're all getting hurt here by mm -hmm. this situation because our, our entire brand is being impacted and we are going to struggle to get jobs if this whole situation doesn't get fixed. I would also think, by the way, you're at Apollo, but, you know, in private equity land, venture capital land, think about asset managers who uh, manage the endowments of these universities mm -hmm. um, that create, uh, try to create performance. What would happen if Apollo called up the University of Pennsylvania or Columbia and said, you know what, guys, we don't want your money anymore. We're, we're, not, we're not managing your money until you get your act together. And by the way, it wouldn't be a totally crazy thing, because the truth is the universities 
are typically sending you guys questionnaires saying, what's your DEI policy? How, what, are your, what are your values? And if, if, if you don't, if, no, if, if you no, don't I'm, fill I'm, out. I, there's so much in what no, you're asking. But I'm saying if you don't fill out that form right. the way they like, mm -hmm. they say we're not working with you either. So I think that there's an opportunity, actually, for the business community to use its influence. Now, I know there's a lot of people, I wrote this, and some, there were a lot of people who loved it, and there were a lot of people who said, Andrew, you're being taken too far. Uh, but I've talked to a lot of business executives before I wrote that column uh, that were trying to think about what is the role of business in all of this. Well, let, let me, I'll, I will get yep, to that. Please. First thing, you, you, uh, you bring up a very good point. Universities have been very quick to criticize all of our other institutions and organizations about their behavior, their governance, their self-reflection. I think it's time to say to universities, and this can be for the business community, it could all, Congress has done a great job here. Congress has shined a light on the fact that there is no transparency around these types of issues at universities. No self-reflection, no reporting. If, if I were advising um, uh, the Fox Committee on right. this, I would say you should be going out to all universities and asking these questions. What type of perspective, what type of representation do you have in your faculty? Do you have a balanced faculty? Right. Have you thought about it? Are you dealing with, are you, what are you doing to deal with anti-Semitism? Have you fired anyone for anti-Semitism? Are you, are you stepping up? Now, in the business community, Andrew, I, I don't think that you should ask every student. I look at my students in my class at Penn. Yep. I don't think I should be standing in front of them while they're working 60 hours a week and saying, you know what you got to do? You got to go out and make those, uh, you know, 1% protesters in the yard who are clearly people that you really right. don't even want to engage with. You got to go change I, their I, behavior. I think that's fair because this is where the administration needs to do it. Admi that's well, the by administration's the way, I, 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 let me, job. Let, let me just. Uh, and, and, and they should stand up let, for those students. Right. Let me clarify. I mean, this, they should stand up clarify. for those 90% of students who, right. who want to learn.